Hello world, this is Shruti Pandey and today I have with me Vaishali Vagle, who is the founder of Zines, to give you a little backstory about what's some commonality between uh, her and me. We both used to, or I used to work at an investment bank where I first saw Vaishali with her amazing demeanor and I still remember a vivid memory still in my head where she was talking to somebody explaining that how an employee's body language, what they wear to a workplace, even describes and defines if they are interested in working in that place or not. So with that vivid memory, thank you so much, Vaishali, for raising my platform and giving me your time today. Thank you so much, Shruti. Pleasure is mine. And uh, I really think you're done doing an amazing job with this podcast that is reaching people who are finding value in it. And I'm very honored to be part of this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So I have created a couple of questions for you to understand your journey and to also help people understand, you know, the space of uh, what's very important these days, thanks to the social media, thanks to the corporate hustle culture, where people are getting more into, you know, branding or coaching or transforming themselves really into uh, how they can make their career worthwhile while having that so-called work-life balance. So can we get started with the questions or in case you have any thoughts, we can go through that and then dive into the questions. No, I'm all ears. Let's go into the questions. Awesome. So I first want to understand what led you to, you know, starting up this, this venture of yours, uh, Zenes. Like how did that happen eight years back? All right. So the Zenes story is a very, uh, it, it's an interesting, but at the same time, a very old story in that sense, uh -huh. because while it started eight years ago, I think the seeds of Zenes were sold much before that, probably like in 2002, maybe. Um, and that really was when I experienced something which was very new to me at that point in time. This word personal branding, transformation, paying attention to, to you as the person uh, so much was not, I would say, in vogue at, at that point in time. But there was an experience that I went through in that year in 2002, which led me to so many questions. Uh, and I'm a little bit of a curious kind who like keeps, you know, what's, what is this? Why is this happening? Why is this troubling me? And why are, why are the people doing what they're doing? So on. But I couldn't find those answers for multiple years. And, you know, sometimes you just let it simmer uh, for a while. And that simmering went on for a little longer, I think. Uh, but then in about 2012-ish, uh, I came across this very interesting person who was sitting and just looking at her, I, I reached out. And which is very unlike me, not, not at all my character type to just randomly reach out to somebody and say, I don't know what is it about you, but I find it very interesting to ask you, what, what is it that you do? Mm -hmm. um, and she said, I'm an image consultant. Wow. Like, image well, consultant at that point for me was, I'm being a techie. Uh, it, I thought it is imaging. So, you know, some sort of software to create images of something. I said, oh, that's quite interesting. Tell me more because my, my inquisitive mind said, okay, this is something nice that I can learn about technology. And she just told me something so different, which was not tech related. And, you know, it's like suddenly you think, oh, there is, there is image consulting, which is a brand new term. I've never heard this before. Sounds interesting. The person who, who she was, gave out such a, a vibe, like they say, which was like, huh, ah, that's, that's a very positive feeling I'm getting there. Interestingly, the next day, I came across an advertisement in the newspaper, which again said image consulting. So imagine, you know, day, two days in a row, I hear this new term image consulting. And again, I said, okay, now I have to find more about this. I went and registered for the program. They were doing some sort of orientation so on and so forth. I just went in, registered, I said, I want to learn this. As I was learning, there was this realization, Shruti, and it was a very wonderful realization. <laughs> Probably, you know, somebody who comes from a technology background, somebody who's done very sort of nerdy, me and my laptop are the best friends. 
Yeah, I think this is so helpful. This is wonderful. This is not just helping me. I think there are lots of people like me who can benefit from this. Mm-hmm. And just that thought led to Zenis. Mm-hmm. That, was, that was how Zenis was born. It wasn't a lot of, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to <laughs> be a founder, nothing of that. I said, this is amazing. I love this. This helps me. And there are tons of people I'm sure like me who will benefit from this. And Zenis was born. That felt really surreal and very relatable uh, for the fact that, you know, I also come from a techie background and um, like you were narrating very aptly, for us, image processing or image consulting is something very different and we can't think of anything else except for technology or tool or a program that they would be using. And it makes total sense. And I, I actually wanted to understand from you, like, who else uh, a better person uh, than you to understand about personal branding. But I also want to, you know, lay out my uh, concerns or maybe questions about it. Because like you rightly mentioned, as a technologist and nerd, when we are always on the laptop and yes, we might be participating in and out of things in the corporate world, colleagues, cubicle, et cetera, et cetera. But like, why is there a need of personal branding? Plus, given the fact that we come from, you know, an Indian society where uh, girls or boys, we are raised as, you know, having that character and being that influencing force on, if not everybody else, at least on your younger siblings, where you're like, okay, look at her, she's doing so well, why can't you? And, you know, sort of stuff like this already happening in our culture and society. I, I want to understand firstly as a technologist and then as a society, you know, coming from the culture that we as Indians come from, why is there even a need for personal branding? Like, is it even legit? Do we really need it? I love this question. Anytime somebody asks me, uh, you know, the, the, the legit of personal branding, yeah. uh, I, I love the fact that it's now gone from a want to a need. Yeah. Wants are those that you may say, well, I, I can live without the wants, but needs are something that you really now need yeah. to pay attention to, right? So I think personal branding is no longer a want, it's a need. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it is it uh, right for us to talk about it in the culture that we are? Um, and I think it, it definitely is. What is unfortunate about the space is a lot of misrepresentation, right? Okay. So if I were to tell you, Shruti, personal branding, and if I'm, if I'm going to be your coach and I'm going to teach you personal branding or I'm going to help you uh, re-evolve your brand, uh, which means go buy some expensive clothes, uh, wear the most expensive brands and keep walking around, and that's your new brand, right? That sounds so frivolous. That sounds very, very, very uh, superficial in my uh, terms as well. But I think that has led to this whole thing of what is this personal branding? Why why does one even pay attention to it? And therefore, I want to, if at all possible through this medium, try and break that myth one more time, which is to say that personal branding is not about what the clothes that you wear and uh, just the, the externalization of the person that you are. Personal branding really is who you are. It is as, as core as that. And if I can tell you who I am in the most authentic manner, that allows you to get to know me better. That allows you to appreciate my strengths, my values, and you could be anybody. You could be a new friend that uh, comes in my life. You could be a new team member in a corporate world. You could be my boss. Uh, You could be a client, a stakeholder, whoever it is. And we are all trying to build connections with people, right? As As a human, you can't live without connections. I think COVID has amplified that for us, the realization that we need these human connections more uh, than ever. And what's, what is a better way to build a connection with somebody than to tell the person who you truly are? Because then that 
can allow the other person to get to know you better, uh, create new projects for you, align you to projects and work that are according to your strengths and aspirations, understand you in a way that uh, why you do what you do sort of thing and, and so on and so forth. Now, if, if you don't do that, yeah, let's say you don't do personal branding. So how do you go about? You, you do go about a little bit unconsciously in, in the ways of the corporate world that, uh, hi, I'm Vishali, I'm XXX, right? So we either give our title, we give our designation, or we give the education, and that's about it. That's how we sort of start to introduce ourselves. Sure. And we let time take its own uh, you know, pace about somebody someday will recognize my worth. Oh, okay, okay. That's not a bad way to approach if you have a whole lot of time <laughs> with you. But it's also, you're, you're letting the control in somebody else's hands. Mm. You, are, you are not taking or doing the, the job that you were meant to do, which is tell your own story. So personal branding simply is telling your own story to the world. This is not marketing. This is not creating a fake persona. Uh, this is not telling about you in a way that it puts somebody else down. None of that. This is just purely telling who you are. What is it about you that I should pay attention to? What is it about you that will help in this kind of work? Uh, what is it about you that I would really love to explore more and, and so on and so forth, right? So that, that is all there is to it. It just opens doors for you uh, in a manner that you've never experienced before because you are able to bring out your most authentic self forward. Thank you so much for, you know, covering so many valid arguments or debates or points that we have around this topic called personal branding because I think you made a lot of sense when you said and called out the misrepresentation part. Like, it's not just about wearing a branded cloth. And also thank you uh, for calling out, you know, about... Um, the, the fakeness. I sometimes see that people are trying to turn into a celebrity, which looks like, okay, what are, what are they trying to really achieve or what are they trying to really do? So if I understand this uh, right from uh, the conversation we are just having, so it's trying to break the myth from the misrepresent, misrepresentation, what personal branding is not, also not getting into the markety or the, the fake side, but just owning the truth of who you are and that can be very uh, daunting for most people right i'm just trying to understand like for humans in general just owning the fact that who you are what if half of them are like we don't even know who we are and then i'm supposed to own that thing so it could be really very horrifying or daunting to just own that thing up right i don't know if if I want to call it as uh, daunting to own the person that you are, I think what gets daunting is to do the reflection oh. about who am I. Uh, and, and in our process at, at Zenes, we have something called as discovery. And a lot of people really find it nobody asked me this before sort of situation. You know, they, they go into sometimes pretty deep thoughts about, oh, I never thought of myself this way. Yeah. Uh, pretty senior uh, corporate leaders have, have said this to me. If only you'd asked me this 20 years ago. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot of realization that starts to happen, but it is also a very, uh, like you said, a slightly difficult space. Um, because we're very quick to give feedback to others. Yeah. But this is almost giving feedback to yourself to say, you know, this is me. Am I, am I going to own up to this me uh, unapologetically? Like this is, wow. that's what is daunting sometimes. Wow. You know, I used to feel there are more cons to personal branding. I'll be very unapolog unapologetically honest about this. I used to feel that there is no better in the, the personal branding thing, but right now, just talking to you, something just 
stuck like a lightning on my head uh, and with the who am i and the different aspects that you talked right now it it really uh, so i i would not call myself religious but a spiritual person and it was mostly about you know the self realization aspect and how ramana maharishi basically calls like who am i the quintessential question that we may have and uh, it's making a lot more sense for me to understand that okay personal branding is not that bad because i think a lot of people usually judge the whole gamut of personal branding you know looking at oh my god this is probably bad and what is this marketing strategy all about but this is not really a marketing strategy this is all about you who you are yourself makes a lot lot of sense so i want to understand from you two more aspects of this entire game or this entire plethora of personal branding which is what do you really mean by executive presence like i walk into room and the lights fall on me like what 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 is it about executive presence and what is it about transformational coaching like does the two of them go hand in hand hmm okay i'll take i'll sort, sort of take one at a time uh, sure. and then we'll see if there is how to bring a linkage if at all possible so uh presence executive is an adjective attached to it right just think of the word presence for a second okay uh what does the presence of a person mean to you um it it just simply means that is the person there in his or her totality thanks nice. yeah hmm? that's my presence so today you and i are sitting here uh you and i both don't seem to have any distractions coming our way thankfully right so no phones buzzing no children screaming nothing uh, wifi is supporting so far so <laughs> everything going well and we are with each other like we're not we're not distracted by anything i'm here in my totality physical mental emotional presence you likewise right so that is our presence when we bring our presence to whatever we do in its totality it just amplifies the output wow that's one way to think of it okay. now we attach this interesting adjective executive because <laughs> a lot of this presence conversation uh happens in a corporate setting but i would argue that presence is even in a setting with your friends and family right are you there not attending but in attendance right so right. not just being present physically but in your full presence now when it comes to executive as an angle um the the word itself says this is sort of in a very corporatized world yeah. what is your presence in a corporatized world yeah. uh and think of that uh what does a corporate executive bring to the table the person brings his or her knowledge yeah the person brings his or her values Uh, and the person brings his or her demeanor style whatever you call it right now the com- combination of all three is what the person's presence is yeah yeah uh, and a lot of times people have said this to be a combination therefore of your character your substance and your style that's yeah. that's how the definitions have come across as character substance and style but li- really what is what is the character it is everything that you have built as a core of this person the who am i of a personal brand will slowly start to expose the character exactly the substance is your subject matter it is everything that you studied experienced so all of the the matter that you've collected up there is is literally your substance right mm-hmm. uh, and then style is your wrapper around it how do you allow the world to see your character and your substance that's through your style uh, mm-hmm. and therefore executive presence is loosely spoken of as the way you communicate with this world again that's your means, again when you say communicate with the world in uh, you mean in every way right like from me talking to my totality awareness of how i'm interacting with you to the way i've dressed my body language everything would 
uh, come into picture, is it? Yes, it's it's your words. Uh, if you're not speaking, also there is presence. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Uh, so that um, it is everything about. See, we are all the time communicating. If you want to just think of it this way. Yes. We are all the time communicating. Uh, either you're communicating with your eyes, you're communicating with other parts of your body, you're communicating with words. Um, all of that are different forms of communication. And a, a lot of research has already told us this, and we don't need to reinvent it, that the non-verbal communication is sometimes much more powerful. The visual impact of anything is so strong than uh, what is written. Uh, therefore, even if I'm saying something, but my body language says something else, you would probably pay more attention to the body language and say, oh, it doesn't feel like the two are going in harmony, right? Yeah. Uh, therefore, presence of a person can be everything that is communicable uh, and in various ways of communication. So where does this transformation coaching aspect comes into picture? Like, is it sitting between the who am I and getting to this part? Like, if I were to understand the chronology, chron chronology of this, like, where does this really fit into the picture? So transformation coaching becomes a, a way of learning. If you were to think personal branding is one thing you learn, presence, executive presence is something else you learn. And that accordingly at Zenes, we have multiple other things of, of learning. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in most of these learning, there is some sort of learning that is imparted. So if I were to uh, quote somebody on personal branding, there is something that I will impart as learning, either certain methodology or certain techniques and so on. Okay. Uh, Literally all the learning at JP Morgan has a very practical angle to it. I think coming from a tech background, you appreciate the practicality of things versus just theory up to theory, right? So while there's a, a backing to it, but everything is very practical and implementable. But that is the, the, the other space of Zenith. Yeah. The coaching space uh, is where there is no learning that is imparted as techniques or methods or steps to do things. Coaching is a different space in itself. Coaching allows the person to start to, to go into their own selves and seek out answers that lie within them. Now, this sounds very fuzzy at times, uh, and therefore coaching really comes when uh, most people need to figure out things. Mm -hmm. Most people are wondering, oh, I need to go from point A to point B. Sure. I may have tried it before. It didn't work. Something came in the way. I don't know what came in the way. Or I've never tried it before, but I'm scared. I need a co-passenger to, to guide me in that process. Or the organization expects sometimes their leaders to go from point A to point B. Now, I'm just giving you very roughly point A to point B. Point A can be today and point B can be, you know, take over the business. Point B can be become the CEO. Point B can be anything, right? So we're not describing what, it, but it's just, you want to move from here to here. Sure. There is no training that you need. Right? But you, you need a certain way of going there, reaching there. Right. You want to reach there in a certain amount of time, not like, I, okay, even if it takes me 10 years, that's fine. Right. So there is, there is timeliness to it. There is a certain assurance to, to getting to the point B. Uh, and then you want a little bit of guidance. And most importantly, this is change. A to B is a change for any person. And you know how are we wired for change? We just don't seem to love changes. If especially, even if they are through our own selves, mm -hmm. uh, but especially if they are situational and so on, right? Okay. So how do you create a space that allows a person to go from point A to point B by mm -hmm. finding out, so these were the roadblocks. How do I overcome these roadblocks? Which direction do I take? 
uh, what kind of navigation is necessary for this? And I know I'm giving you pretty, uh, <laughs> you know, different kind of analogy here, but it's, it is this. So, so when you think of transformational coaching, it is a way to understand that the coach and the client are partners. Mm -hmm. It's not a hierarchy. When it comes as a teacher and a student or a trainer and a, uh, a trainee, there is a hierarchy. Yeah, correct. Right? I will tell you something because I know something more than you. But coaching is a space which is a partnership because we think that I, as a coach, I don't know more than you about your situation. You are the best person who knows your situation. Mm -hmm. I know about coaching as a methodology. So when the two come together, that combination is lethal. And that combination, and in most cases today, we see uh, a lot of senior leaders are uh, using coaching because it just sort of you know breaks so many barriers. It's taking them to, to places they've never even thought of. Uh, a lot of times there are potentials that were never known that suddenly come up in a coaching conversation. So people don't even know that I, I have this potential. It comes up in the conversation. And as, forget about every aspect of this, but just as a human, when you're able to achieve this, right? right? Like, even if I want to not label you as a coach, but in general, as a human, if you're, we are able to help another human uh, realize their potential, it would feel so fabulous, right? At some of our own core level that, okay, I helped him or her look at their own self, which they didn't really knew earlier or they weren't aware of really. It would be such a great feeling. It is, it is, it is definitely an amazing feeling. It is a very satisfying feeling, I should say, because you can see that the person, you know, I, I really, for that one, whoever comes into Zenis, uh, right. I really find that 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 one step, two steps, whatever, how many other steps they take, but that you know, every one, one little step that they take is, is so meaningful, is so satisfying for me. Um, and for me, since Zenis, it is a very different feeling, Shruti. This, the the pre-Zenis feeling was my growth, my, uh, you know, where am I headed type of thing. Right. Now it's more of um, the clients and their growth and, I don't know how that has come about. It feels very, very different in that sense. But that's uh, that's a nice space to be in. And congratulations for getting into that phase uh, for yourself, right? Uh, it would be so amazing to uh, see all these leaders uh, being either growing into something more or something major and helping them in achieving such a major victory. I want to bring this story a full circle with a funny aspect. While I mentioned uh, in the introduction, I still remember like it's been what 2015 or 16 when I first saw you, you know, you were talking to somebody and I was just passing by. We were in the same office as you would remember. And you, you, I still remember very, very vividly that you're mentioning to this person that the way a person dresses uh, implies that he or she is, you know, looking forward to coming to the office or not. And I don't know why that sentence stuck into my head, just stuck into my head. It's been so many years and it just doesn't go out. So when I actually joined and started working for startups and I used to see kids, you know, who are earning so much where it wasn't really paid back then when we started, right? Like we weren't earning a bomb, but now these kids do and I'm very happy for them. And despite that, when they wear shorts and slippers to the office, it would just kill me. I, I would be like, why? Like, wh what does this imply? Are they not interested in coming to office? Like, how do you see this entire change of work culture and dressing up really? Or do you think it's just being very frank and saying to the world, okay, this is who am I and I'm going to wear these things to office? So I think uh, the most important thing is to, to, to always make sure we are in the context. I know you had brought the, the thing about Indian culture before when you'd asked about is personal branding even right for our culture? But it's the same thing. So what the culture of an organization will play a role in the 
in the dress. Ah. Dress is just one aspect of it, right? Okay. Uh, it will play a role in the communication. Like what kind of words do you use uh, in your communication? And uh, it will play a role in uh, how you make the employee grow, who's, who's taking like, you know, that kind of. So culture becomes the foundation in, in a lot of that. That's point number one. So we cannot look at two different individuals. Yeah. One, let's say, to the point that you were making, dressed in shorts and t-shirt, and another dressed in whatever suit, for example, mm -hmm. and say, oh, this the person wearing suit seems more serious about work, and the person in shorts is less serious. I don't think we can say that because culturally they may be coming from very different organizations, mm -hmm. where. This is the dress code of the organization. Shorts and t-shirt is probably a very common startup, tech startup dress code, right? We've infamously seen this uh, in the US culture. And uh, unfortunately, we keep imbibing a lot of, uh, you know, imports happening from US into here. This is one such thing that we have uh, embraced. And if that is your culture, then that you can't bring it out of that culture to say, oh, because I see shorts, it means something. No, the, the shorts are part of that culture and could possibly be a very normal thing uh, to, to wear. You have, you have no idea how many myths and cons and all sorts of things you have broken for me today, right from the branding aspect to the transformation and the presence aspect and even the culture. Like it makes a lot of sense when you say what the culture of a place is. Let's let's keep it as simple as a place it could be any place it could be my home it could be the office wherever so what the culture is really and how do i fit into it is uh, with respect to how we communicate or dress or style or whatever is going to make sense and uh, this was an amazing amazing session to you know just get up upgraded in so many of the myths that hold us back in very many things of understanding what a presence means, what a branding means. And uh, for for very simple example, like wearing shorts is also probably acceptable if that's how the startup is functioning, for instance. So this is making a lot, lot sense to me. And I'm pretty sure it's going to help all the audience who are going to watch this episode. I don't want to end this uh, interview but in case you have any parting thoughts and we would like to wrap up this every good thing comes to an end I would say but in case you have any parting thoughts Vaishali before we wrap this up well I think you you've got a, a whole gamut uh, sort of covered uh, the the one thing that I would just uh, add on and maybe this was part of your question earlier which is the connection between all of this the personal branding presence uh, transformational coaching. I think the, the the connection is, I know we like to create a very hierarchical connection or uh, a linked connection that do this first and then this and then this, right? So it's not as if it is linked. Um, at Zenes, we have a, a pretty wide range of things that we uh, cover and look at, like from a, a, a corporate entry to retirement you know i like to wow. call it that <laughs> it is just that you need different things at different phases in your life mm -hmm. and if you think of an early career we have a program for that if you think of the mid there is a program for that uh, which sort of is the executive presence and if you think of the seniors uh, which i would like roughly say 15 plus years or uh, 20 plus years of experience, then that is where the coaching angle comes in. because coaching mm -hmm. is paramount importance to starting to uncover a lot of areas. It is, um, it is, it is more, I would say reflective in nature versus yeah. just learning one, two, three, four, five, right? And that is what you need after a certain stage. That does not mean you don't need coaching at the start, Right. Uh, I have a lot of a uh, lot of senior uh, leaders who are taking coaching. I likewise, I have a lot of you know new hires who have who have thought that this helps and so on. Like a, a bunch of CA students uh, came to me for coaching. Of course, students is a very different area, but that is what it is. So it's not linked, linked, but it is different things, uh, more need based. Where you are at at what phase, uh, and what have you, what do you want to learn? 
I think when learning is more uh, need based, the receptivity is higher. Is is how I feel. So it truly validates, uh, like you mentioned at the start, that it's not a want anymore, but it's really a need. You could be a student, you could be just getting into the corporate somewhere in the mid level, or maybe having an experience of twenty years, and you're like, okay what have I done and now where I'm supposed to go because everywhere we are trying to go from that point A to point B. So this episode and this narrative of yours has really come a full circle and it's making all sense and linked in a very beautiful way. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us. Thank you so much, Ruth. Thank you.